Hello and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel where we talk about paint and play Blood and Plunder. Today this is a quick start guide to get you playing right away. Guy, tell us about the game we have set up here. Today we have a simple land game set up on a three foot by three foot board. My English Buccaneers are attacking your Spanish militia in a take and hold scenario. Now Joseph, what sort of Spanish will I be attacking today? My Spanish force is made up of three different units led by an experienced commander. In Blood and Plunder, each unit has a unique set of characteristics, weapons, and abilities. I have a unit of Lanceros, a, sol a solid Spanish soldier armed with lances. My second unit, the Milicianos Indios, which is behind this building here, is more of a native unit that is quick and tricky armed with bows and arrows. My final unit, an inexperienced group of Spanish militia. Militia, or Milicianos, is armed with old-fashioned matchlock muskets and is led by my forces commander. Tell us about your force, guy. My force of English buccaneers is smaller but better armed. My experienced buccaneer commander is attached to a unit of eight freebooters, the quintessential English sailor soldier. They carry a dangerous buccaneer gun along with a pistol sidearm. My second veteran elite unit, the Forlorn Hope, are a brave buccaneer storming party, armed to the teeth with buccaneer guns, several pistols, and explosives. With the board set up, scenario selected, and forces assembled, you're ready to deploy your units. Players take turns deploying their forces, one unit at a time, starting with a defender. Deployment zones are determined by the scenario. For take and hold scenario, players deploy their forces within six inches of opposite board edge. In this case, We've already deployed our forces, so they're set up for this game. In Blood and Plunder, you use an activation deck, which is an ordinary deck of 54 cards. Each turn, you draw a hand of cards equal to the number of units in your force. These cards will dictate how many actions units can perform, and which player will take initiative on each activation. Spades activate first, followed by hearts, then diamonds, and finally clubs. Card numbers break ties. Each card also determines how many actions your unit can perform, with higher initiative cards giving less actions and slower cards giving more actions. Now with some setup and basics out of the way, you're going to start playing the game. To start playing, select a card from your hand and place it face down on the table. Reveal the cards and the player with the card with a higher initiative will select one of their units to activate. In this case, my heart beats your club. Ah. Each card you play is called an activation, and you start by choosing a unit to activate that has not been activated that turn. I'm going to activate my Milicianos Indios first. This unit is trained, so my heart gives it two actions. The most basic action is a move. To move, a unit chooses a direction and moves the models four inches or less. The models in each unit need to stick together with no model being further than four inches away from other models in the unit. When moving a unit, try keeping the unit in cover. That is where these trees in this grassy area mean. Units are more likely to survive being shot at if they are in cover. Usually moving through rough terrain and cover applies a 1 inch penalty to a move, but this unit has a special rule called scouts that negates that. I'll move again, and then my activation will be over. I'll go next using my club. I'll activate my unit of Forlorn Hope and they get three actions from the club because they're trained. They don't have the scouts rule, so each move is only three inches. Now that I'm this close, I'll use the Forlorn Hope's muskets to shoot. Shooting is another standard action. To shoot, first choose a target that you're shooting at. The Milicianos Indios in this uh, 
instance, which are right over here. Then look up the unit shoot score, which is a six in this case. After that, you measure the shortest distance between the two units, which is a little bit more than 12 inches right now. For every full four inches, you add one to the shoot score, and that is the number you need to get on a D10 to hit. You then roll one D10 for each model that is shooting. Each model does need a clear line of sight to at least one model in the target unit, the Milicianos Indios, but you can shoot through your own models in this case. At over 12 inches, the, the range penalty is three, that's added to my range, my shoot score of six. So the target number I need is nine plus. Two hits. Ah, a little lucky. When a unit takes hits, there's a chance that it will not be fatal. For each hit, the defending player rolls a d10 in an attempt to cancel a hit. This is your save roll. Luckily, my unit is in cover, so I can use their shoot save stat six in this case. If they were out of cover, it's always a flat 9-10 for a save. One death. After rolling saves, you always make a fatigue test on a number of dice equal to the number you lost plus one. Two dice in this case. Then check the unit's resolve characteristic. The Melissianos Indios have a resolve of six, so results of six or higher will pass the test. For each failed result, that unit gains a point of fatigue, two in this case. Fatigue is a pain and a little tricky. It represents how tired or scared or worn out the unit is. A unit with one point of fatigue has no penalty. Having two or more, will rob a unit of one action when it activates. After a unit shoots a firearm, they get two reload markers. I have one action left, so I'm going to use a reload action, which is another basic action, to reload, remove one reload counter. And now we're on to the next card. A ruse! When you have less cards in your hand than your opponent, you may pretend to play a card, but pull it back instead of revealing it. We call this a ruse. Since you don't have a card, my diamond wins by default. I'm going to activate my command unit, the Milicianos. They're inexperienced, so the diamond gives them two actions. I'll start my activation by moving my Milicianos twice. The first move is through some rough terrain, so that only be three inches, and the second move is an open, so it'll be four inches, so seven inches total. I've used my two actions with my Milicianos, but this unit also has the commander attached to it which we can use now. Each commander has their own stats that make them stand out from a regular model. The two most important of these stats are the model's command range and command points. With command points, a commander can tell a unit, any unit within its command range to do any one action. With my commander's first command point, I can give my Milicianos a third action to shoot. With a base shoot skill of seven and a range of 10 inches, to these freebooters over here, I'll need nines to hit. And then I'll have to add two reload markers to my unit. Skunked! I got no hits on that roll. Now in Blood and Plunder there is a mechanic called Fortune Points where each player starts with three coins or tokens. Um, you can spend these coins to do a number of things. The main thing is you can re-roll a whole hand of dice. So I'm going to re-roll this whole hand, hoping to actually get some hits. And skunked again. You can't re-roll more than once, so I'll just have to live with that shame forever. With my second command point, 
I'm going to tell my Milicianos Indios to perform a rally action to remove fatigue. It's not their activation, but the command point can make them do one action. When you rally a unit, you roll 1d10 for each fatigue that unit has, with the unit's resolve as the target number. As we saw, this unit has a resolve of 6. Each result of a 6 plus removes one point of fatigue. I got one success. My commander has the inspiring special rule, and that lets me re-roll any failed results once. There, I got a second success, and I can remove both points of fatigue, leaving my Melissianos Indios in good shape again. And with that, my command unit's activation is over. Looks like my spade beats your club. I'm going to activate the only unit I have left, my command unit of freebooters, with my spade. The spade gives my trained freebooters only one action. And for that action, I'm going to move my freebooters out of cover towards your Militianos. Always lead with the commander. I'm only moving them three inches because they do not have scouts. I'll now use a command point to tell this unit to shoot at Melissianos. My commander has a brace of pistols instead of a musket. Pistols are a very short range weapon and have a plus two penalty to the shoot test if the target is four or more inches away. I'm more than four inches away, so my commander has a two plus two on his shoot test to shoot with his pistol. The unit, which has a shoot score of six, needs only a seven, whereas my commander needs a nine. Wow, my dice are on fire. That's four hits. When a unit is hit and they are out of cover, they will only save on nines and tens. My unit is now shaken. If a unit has three or more fatigue, it becomes shaken and has to either fall back four inches away from the attacking unit or go prone. Shaken units are ineffective fighting units who can only rally until they are no longer shaken. In this case, I'm going to go prone. Three casualties. And represent prone by laying one model down. To show that a unit is prone, lay one model on its side. A unit that is prone is harder to hit and adds a minus two bonus to its shoot saves. For my last command point, I'm going to give my Forlorn Hope a reload action so they're ready to fire again next turn. And with that, my activation is over. For my club, I'm going to activate my Lanceros. A club gives a trained unit three actions. I have just enough movement to get all the way to your freebooters. Every unit that is not shaken has a three inch control zone around the models that the opponent's units cannot enter unless they use a charge action. A charge is essentially a move action that brings a unit into base to base contact, followed by a free fight action using the unit's fight skill. I've already moved my Lanceros eight inches. Anytime you move a unit more than eight inches in one activation, that unit takes one point of fatigue for running. When a unit is charged, it may take one point of fatigue to make a defensive attack in an effort to stop the charge. The Freebooters, Buccaneers guns, are spent with two reload markers, but this unit also has a pistol sidearm that can be used once per game. I'll take one point of fatigue to fire my pistols at the charging Lanceros. With a range of less than four inches, Pistols only have a penalty of one, so I need sevens to hit. When a unit is partially in cover, roll saves for the models that are in cover first, even if those units are further away. In this case, I need 
sixes to save. And a miracle, I've canceled all hits, but I still have to make a fatigue test on one die. Now that I survived your defensive fire, I get a to complete my charge and get a free fight action. Lanceros have a pretty good fight skill of five, and I'm rolling six dice. Okay, Freebooters have a fight save of six, but the Lances give a plus one penalty on saves when they hit charge, so I'm looking for sevens now. Ah! Well, that's okay. Now I'm going to roll uh, four dice and look for my resolve of five. All right, my Freebooters have four fatigue now and are shaken. A unit in melee that becomes shaken has to fall back four inches directly away from the attacking unit. When a unit falls back, if they were in melee with another unit, that unit, attacking unit, may take a free move action to pursue them and stay engaged. Okay, that's the end of the turn. Things are not looking good for my English. At the end of each turn, players should calculate and compare strike points. Several game con conditions result in strike points for your force, and taking casualties is the most common. For each full quarter of your force removed as casualties, you get a strike point. For me, that is every three models. Four of my models are dead, so I have one strike point from casualties. My force is larger, so I get a strike point for every four models. Four of my models are dead, so I have one strike point from casualties as well. But you can also gain strike points from other things like scenario rules. In take and hold, if a player controls the central objective, the opposing player takes a strike point. So in this case, I control it, so a guy gains a second strike point. Oh no, forgot about objectives. Because I have two strike points, if my opponent didn't have any strike points, I would need to make a strike test. But I don't in this case. When you need to make a strike test, you roll a single d10 with your commander's resolve of the unit that he's attached to as the target number. So in this case, you don't have to make a uh, strike test. We would continue to the second turn of the game by drawing a new hand and activating all units again. So the battle continues. Well, this has been an exciting turn, just one turn, of about a 90-point game, and it would continue from here. It wouldn't continue long. Not, no, not, <laughs> not with where my commander ended up. We threw a lot of information at you, or we didn't explain everything, but that's, it was a quick start. You can see the moves, the reloads, the fights, the shoot actions. Um, and we intend to do a learn to play C game in the future as well. This was just covering land combat and getting a lot of the basics in out there, like basic actions, like move, shoot, reload. Am rally. I missing one? Rally. <laughs> and then we plan to do another series, so watch out for a playlist of more detailed videos on various parts of the game. Firelock does have some of those up as well currently, so you could check those out, but some of them are a little bit old. Um, I hope this helps you get started and throw some dice right away and get your miniatures on the board. Obviously, it's smart to read the rule book. Don't rely just on things like this, but hopefully this is helpful right away. And if you want have any questions about the game, feel free to leave a comment. We always check our comments and like replying to them and talking about rules questions. We're not perfect. We make a mistake in every game we play. <laughs> There's a lot to keep track of. I didn't miss a little bit. It's okay. You just keep playing. Well, I hope this has been helpful getting you on the board. Uh, our YouTube channel is filled with uh, more videos on uh, Blood and Plunder. And check out our blog as well, full of articles related to the game. Um, what else do we got up on that blog, guy? Eh? We have great uh, articles about different factions. We have ones about using the new Raise the Black models that just came out. 
And we also have other models or other articles about tactics and playing the game and painting and doing all this fun stuff. Plenty to explore. Thanks for watching this. Hopefully, hopefully it's helpful. And see you on the next one. And keep your dice at the ready and the wind at your back. Yar har. That's for Dan.